Welcome to the 43rd episode of the series Decolonizing the Mind. Uh, I do a sub-series on the economic theory, the decolonial economic theory, and dealing with the experiences of different countries. And today I'll talk about Bolivia. <clears throat> but before I do that, today we saw in the news uh, that President Ibrahim Raisi and his companions have been killed. I posted this message on my Facebook, offering my condolences to the people of Iran. This morning, I wrote, this morning I was shocked to hear the news of the death of President Ibrahim Raisi and his companions in a helicopter crash. Normally, a news item like this would not touch me personally, but just five days ago, <clears throat> I was in Mashhad for the fifth global conference on Imam Reza, peace be upon him, where he, I was scheduled to speak. <clears throat> I was in the same room with Raisi. Raisi gave a speech at the closing ceremony of the conference. <clears throat> I wanted to give him a copy of my book on decolonizing the mind. Professor Amelie, who invited me to the conference, suggested that I present him personally with a copy, but the hectic of the press when he left the ceremony prevented me from doing that. The presenter of the ceremony, Hamid Reza Dashti, took the copy and gave it to the press secretary of Raisi. In the copy, I wrote the following message to him. To the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Dr. Said Ibrahim Raisi, thanks for supporting the struggle of the oppressed people of the world from Palestine to Venezuela. I think it could not be a more appropriate message uh, that I could convey uh, to the people of Iran. <clears throat> then, uh, we go to more mundane um, things I ought to deal with, which is Bolivia. Uh, Bolivia has known a tremendous economic growth. Its population grew from 7 to 12 million from 1990 to 2022. Its GDP by population parity grew from 16 to 119 uh million billion us dollars 644 percent growth and the per capita grew from about 2300 to uh, almost uh, 10,000 <clears throat> with uh, more than 300 percent bolivia has an indigenous population of uh 44%, it has been occupied by Spain, um, and compared to other countries, Peru, Guatemala has similar concentration of indigenous people, around 40%, Mexico around 30%, Belize, Ecuador, Panama, with uh, 17, 12 to 17%. Now, Bolivia uh, became independent from Spain in 1820, and the country was named after Simon Bolivar, the liberator of Latin America, Latin Abiyala, as it's now called. <clears throat> in 1952, the Bolivian National Revolution, led by a revolutionary nationalist movement by Vector Passes de Cerro, uh, <clears throat> achieved universal added suffrage. <clears throat> nationalization of the large tin mines, a sweeping land reform, and the promotion of rural education. 1964, a military coup by René Barrientos, supported by the USA, of course, uh, brought in an era of repression. In 1998, the mass movement towards socialism um, was founded and 
some seven years later, uh, and it was the base of it is indigenous people, uh, but they attracted other sectors of society. And in 2005, they win, won the general election with 54% of the votes and Evo Morales became the first indigenous president. In 2009, Mas wins again with 64% of the votes. In 2013, with 61% of the vote. In 2019, Mas got 47%, but then the police, police and military stepped in with support of the Organization of American State, the OS, and the USA, forcing Morales to step down and he had to go to uh, Mexico and they put Shanine Agnes of the Opposition Social Democratic Movement in power. She came to power by a coup d'etat, not through elections. A year later, mass pressure uh, made sure that there were elections and mass and now led by Louis Arce, got 55% uh, of the votes. <clears throat> now, since 2005, when they came to power, uh, they had a, a tremendous economic success, as you can see in the graph, where uh, around 2005, really the economy took off. And the reason for this is the new model social economic communitarian and productive model that louis Arce uh, had developed <clears throat> first as a ministry of uh, as an economist and then a ministry as a minister of economic affairs under louis Arce, and later on he became president and the principles of this model is that the natural resources are in the hand of the state that income should be redistributed, that is generated from the national resources in two ways, industrializing the national resources, improving other production sector, and solving social problems uh, by redistribution programs that generate new income by increasing internal demand. <clears throat> now, this model was developed in 1990 nine by a group of former activists of the Partido Socialista Uni, UNO, PS1, that criticized neoliberalism and did research into a transition to socialism through a construction of a new economic model. The group was named Grupe de Wende, Goblin, and consisted of lecturers, including Louis Arke, uh, who was a professor at the Universidad Mayor de San Andres, and at the Development Sciences postgraduate program of uh, uh, that university. Another group, Grupo Comuna, led by Alfaro Garcia Linera, who became the vice president of the, the government of Evo Morales, was also conducting research about social political progress process in Bolivia. And they joined forces, uh, and the model became the base for the economic program of MAS after from 2006 onwards. <clears throat> One of the things is how do you deal with foreign companies, including Chinese one? And Archer said, we have signed, for example, some investments in lithium, some investments in roads, some investment with Chinese companies that are working in Bolivia. We have the state sugar company that's run by the Chinese people. In many sectors, Chinese companies are becoming are coming to Bolivia. We think that this is good because they bring technology. At the beginning, as many countries do, they wanted to buy all our national resources and that's it. We said, no, that's not the idea for us. The idea for us is to sell value. So if you want to make a business with the Bolivian people, you have to come and establish your business in Bolivia, work in Bolivia, invest in Bolivia. And of course, then you will have everything. Um, and they did work along those lines. Now, the pillars of the new economic model was first, economic and social progress go hand in hand and strengthen each other through the mechanism of internal demand. If people receive more income through social programs, they can spend more money in the economy and thus generate more economic growth. The internal demand cushions the negative effect of falling international prices. 
the role of foreign companies can be beneficial under certain conditions. They can't come and buy all the, all the resources. They have to establish the business in Bolivia and invest in the country. They use the natural resources to build an industrial base for Bolivia. And then there are four propositions of the model. Growth and development are based on the exploitations of natural sources to benefit the Bolivian population, the strategic sectors. State appropriation of the strategic economic sectors, uh, of, of the surplus of the strategic economic sectors, the sector gets <clears throat> the profits out of it. It redistributes that profit to the most vulnerable sectors and thus it reduces social and economic inequality and creates internal demand. <clears throat> by acquiring this economic surplus from the strategic partnership by state ownership and transferring it to the mass of the population, they increase purchasing power so small and medium enterprises can flourish. It is possible to achieve sustainable economic growth in this way. And it has worked very well in Bolivia. And if you look at economic theory, this model has much in common with the theory of the British economist, John Maynard Case, who argued that demand drives supply and that healthy economics, economies spend or invest more than they save. The best way to combat a recession of slowdown of the economy is to increase government spending, even if it means going into debt. This goes against the neoliberal theory. And by boosting consumer purchasing power, the economy can create more jobs, which will lead to sustainable economic growth. Now, I explain this all in chapter nine of my book on decolonizing the mind. You could download uh, this PDF uh, on the website, sandohero.com, and you can support the DTM channel by subscribing to it, sharing it with friends, families, and colleagues, and encourage them to subscribe, get involved in discussion groups, and if you want to make a donation, look at sandohero.com how to do it. Thank you for your attention and hope uh, to see you next week.